Hey, everybody, and welcome to the True Crime Squad. This is Katie Weaver. I'm here with my sister, co-host, and partner in crime, Christy Brower. Hello. Hello. Hey, everybody. Happy Monday. Yeah, it is Monday yet again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seems like that happens, like, every seven days or so. It genuinely does, yeah. I know. That was a really <laughs> lame dad joke. It sucked. <laughs> It's definitely Monday. What can I say? Yes, well, how's it going? You had a action-packed weekend. Uh, I did. It's going really well. Um, we uh, we went to Jackpot, Nevada for the weekend. It was really a lot of fun. We gambled and left a lot of our money behind, unfortunately. <laughs> we usually have at least one of us between me and Rhonda and Mike. One of us will come out on top. Not so much this weekend. Didn't happen. But Today. we had fun. Well, good. We had a good time. Yeah, so it was just nice to get out of town and go do something different, you know? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Well, we took a day trip yesterday and drove through Grand Teton National Park and Yellowstone National Park. Nice. Uh, and then Island Park on the way home. And we were in search of bears. Like, I didn't even take any pictures, you guys, because I wanted to see bears. That's it. Everything else, I'm like, ah, oh, yawn. Okay, fine. <laughs> See, did a Some more <laughs> buffalo, you know. <laughs> I know. Lame. When we were in Grand Teton, I really wanted to see the uh, the Queen of the Tetons, Bear 399, wow. and her cub. This will probably be her last koi, and I really wanted to see her, but we didn't see well, a damn bear. I've seen that, but I don't know. <laughs> Right, she keeps having another one. Uh, yeah, I didn't see any bears. Uh, it sucked. But we had fun. I mean, it's not that we didn't. But uh, yeah, so, I mean, we saw elk and moose and deer and antelope and tons of birds. And, you know, we had a golden eagle when we were in Island Park. We were driving, like, up a really narrow forest road. We had a golden eagle that flew, like, right in front of us, which was pretty Ooh. cool. Yeah, so it's not that we didn't see cool things. We saw cool things, but no bears, damn it. Dang it. I know. It's it's hard to know when to go. And, mm -hmm. and when there are bears out, there are so many tourists in the park that you can't even get very close to see them anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, and uh, yeah, that's true, too. And I just, I don't know. I have We have all these friends that go to the park, and they post all of their pictures of the bears they're seeing. I apparently need to go with them because I obviously don't know what the hell I'm doing. I just want well, to drive down a road and see a bear. Right. Yeah. What I've heard is that they'll go and stay in the park for like a week. Yeah. And then they get up really, really early in the morning because when you usually see them are at dawn. Yeah. Which I, yeah. that's it's just maybe me and bears, our timeline might not ever match up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no. I know. Yeah. There is a lake in the Grand Teton National Forest uh, called Jenny Lake. That's a really magical, special place. And mm -hmm. there's a lodge next to it. And I have been saying for years, wouldn't it be cool for my birthday if we came here and stayed in this lodge and, you know, did a bunch of bear watching all week? And no one's taken the hint yet. I'm just going to have to schedule it myself. <laughs> Probably. But yeah, that would be really, really fun to stay there. Fun to go take the ferry across Jenny Lake, and I yeah, mean, there's a million just walking around Jenny Lake. There. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, well, sounds like we both had action-packed weekends, anyway. Oh yeah, I'm doing the Monday. Oh God, that weekend was a lot. Uh, shuffle, you know. <laughs> Me too, and like the Monday oh. recover day. Yeah, I was supposed to deliver for Flex today, and I woke up and I was like, Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> That's why I like doing that little job is that I can do it when I want and not do it when I don't want to. Uh -huh. Hear you. I hear you. Well, we're doing a true crime roundup today because we both found so many bonkers stories over the weekend that I went, oh, well, we have to do a roundup because there's this is just too much. I mean, people. I don't want to let any of them go. So yeah. 
Chrissy, you're going to kick us off with a WTF news story. Oh, aren't I, though? All right. This is a Komodo dragon. <laughs> I think it's two, isn't it? That's actually two in the photo. Yes, you you may have seen them before. You know, they're only from a small area in Indonesia. Mm-hmm. They can be about 10 feet long and they're venomous, right? These are not lizards that uh, human beings should be coming into regular contact with, like, at all. Oh, dear God. I uh, can only imagine where this is going. Okay. Right. <laughs> so, apparently, there has become a black market for Komodo F dragons. <laughs> of course there has. Oh, no. Do you know they can run 12 miles an hour and they are about 200 pounds? You know who can't run 12 miles an hour? This Me. guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they can take down water buffalo and have been known to attack humans, right? Okay. So would this not tell you that maybe smuggling them would be a super bad idea? Knowing that people smuggle uh, big cats into this country all the time, uh, I'm going to guess, uh, no, nope, people want them. Right. Stupidly, yes, they do. So there's a place called Komodo Island, Mm -hmm. and it is in in Indonesia, and it's like a it's a like a national park. And authorities have had to close it because of the Komodo dragon struggling smuggling ring that has been going on. Now, let me tell you Uh. something. They've been selling these Komodo dragons on Facebook. (laughs) <laughs> of course they have. Yep. I mean, what? That tracks. So, yep. and this was a couple of years ago, but as far as I know, that island is still closed. So, a while back, police seized five Komodo dragons from some smugglers that were trying to sell them on Facebook because, sure, whatever. The poor dragons. They admitted that they had already sold 41 <gasps> Komodo dragons. For between $3,500 and $35,000. Oh, for the love. Oh, yeah. my God. The high ones were for the really big ones and that they sure. were alive. Some people buy them after they've passed, apparently for medicinal reasons. What? Like, lizard, I don't know. Oh, um, and the poor dragons taken from their element. and Right. Oh, my God. Yeah. So they had to shut them down to uh, keep this from happening because, you know, um, they're extremely dangerous. They're, they're uh, protected and endangered. Yeah, they're protected. Okay. And apparently people are just dumb as hell. So they're believing that they're being sold either for medicinal purposes or pets. Because who doesn't want to snuggle a little, a little old Komodo dragon before you go to bed at night, right? Mm. Human beings are not okay. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you do. Human beings Mm-mm. are not okay. Good lord. And with that, I'm going to kick it to you for some weird crime. crime. Oh yeah, weird crime. crime. Oh, <laughs> which one is it? <laughs> I could go either way. Let's do some Let's weird crime time. Weird crime. Here we go. Well, there is no uh, shortage of weird crime right now. Just none at all. But I am going to introduce you to this scene right here. So this is at a Walmart. And I'm going to tell you this story actually happened in 2016, but I just happened on it. And if you've (laughs) already heard it, you'll be happy to hear it again. And if you haven't, well, you'll be very welcome. Two of my stories today are out of Oregon, so we must, of course, ask, Oregon, are you okay? Right. This is, uh, if you're listening and not watching, it's a picture of a man on a horse. He has someone uh, steer roped and tied to a tree (laughs) in a Walmart parking lot. (laughs) Because, of course, right? So, let's hear about our hero. (laughs) So, this is Robert Borba. He is a cowboy. He lives on a ranch outside Eagle Point, Oregon. And he was a true cowboy. He gets around on his horse. He does his stuff. 
So he was at Walmart with his horse uh, to buy dog food. Went in, bought dog food, came back out. And on the way out, he heard a woman screaming. She was screaming that a man stole his bike, her bike and to please stop him. So he looks around and this guy goes whizzing by him on a bike. So he hopped up on his horse and grabbed his lasso and ran this guy down in the Walmart parking lot, threw his rope, lassoed him, yanked him right off the bike. God, I would have loved to have seen this. And tied him to a tree. And, you know, he's so he's tied to a tree on one side and this guy's horse on the other. So he's backed up with his horse to hold him taut, just like you would any cow that you roped. And then he calls 911. And he says, uh, basically tells him, I, I roped a guy and I've got him tied to a tree and you guys need to come. And the 911 operator says, now what? <laughs> this is going to be new even for a 911 operator. Right? <laughs> so the police get there and this is the scene that they saw. Robert on his horse, the bad guy tied to the tree, just hanging out, waiting. He said when he roped the guy, he said... Where's your badge? Where's your badge? And he said, I don't got a badge, man. <laughs> this is a citizen's arrest. Right? He's what? just your friendly neighborhood cowboy out to stop the bike thief. Well, anyway, <laughs> the bike thief was uh, apprehended. And Robert uh, just asked if he could have his rope back, which the police gladly obliged. And he tipped his hat and off he went. Oh, my God. And all's well that ends well. Can you imagine how shocked the bike thief was when he was roped and jerked off the bike? Like, this is not something anyone would be expecting to happen in, you know, the last few hey, decades. <laughs> Holy <Right>. shit. <laughs> they, one of the officers that responded said that uh, he'd be happy to have this guy by his side fighting crime any day. <laughs> well, I mean, let's break it down. Bike thief is safe. He's not dead. He's probably not even injured. Seriously. Yeah. And the lady got her bike back. Mm -hmm. Everyone went home alive. I mean, that seems like a better way to be handling these things than the way the cops have been lately. So It's true. I mean, it's really the happiest of endings. So anyway, it good is. on you, Robert. Good on you. Yeah. But, you know, that, that, that poor bike thief may have to go through some counseling for PTSD after. He may have PTSD about ropes. You can't go to any I store that sells would. ropes. Can't walk down that aisle anyway. Can't look. No, definitely <laughs> not look. His family is a joke. Gives him ropes for Christmas every year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so terrible. Oh. I would. I would if I was his family member. I genuinely would too. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. So that was some weird crime. I'm going to turn the mic over to you for some creepy crime. Yes. Have you ever heard of Jack the Clipper? No. <laughs> well, nor had I till recently. But there has been, and I'm going to tell you that there are actually multiple cases of these incidents in more than one country. Jack the Clipper is a serial cat shaver who is still on the loose. And there's actually more than one Jack the Clipper. What? So apparently. But the cats are fine. The cats are fine. Cats aren't injured. But yeah, okay. Um, they just return home while they've been outside with a big old swath of fur shaved off. This has happened in the U.S. and it's also <laughs> happened in the U.K. And it's random. It's not like they shaved your cat. It's like one swipe up the belly on a leg. One cat had a swipe behind his ear. They just Why? swiped one little bit of hair. I don't know if this person just got the living shit bit out of them and scratched out of them for one swipe so they only ever get one in. But <laughs> in more than one neighborhood in the U.S., and then there was a neighborhood in the U.K., this became quite a problem where people, enough people were reporting it that the police had to start looking into it. Initially, this, hap this was going to veterinarians because people were like, is my cat sick? What's happening? He's got this weird bald patch. But what they're discovering is they're all like a straight line that start that, that are like in a rectangle shape, you know, like a clip as an electric razor would do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Jack the Clipper's uh, 
have never been caught. Nobody knows who's doing this or why. So it's like a and police are crime. a bit flummoxed about copycat. what they can even what. It's like a copycat crime. Excuse the pun. I know, um, right? Like it's happening. Or did, did this guy move from the UK to the US or vice versa? I don't know. Are they just collecting hair samples from as many cats as possible for a scientific experiment? <laughs> Are they some kind of weaving cat challenge? hair into a scarf? I mean, <laughs> the possibilities here are endless. <laughs> and the police said they're not entirely sure what they would even charge this person with because the cats were all unharmed, just had a weird haircut. Uh, have they looked to see if anyone's selling cat hair on Facebook? Right. <laughs> <laughs> they might be listed right next to Komodo dragons. <laughs> That is oh, so God. weird. And I would be very creeped out to think that someone captured yeah. my cat. And these poor cats that. coming home in shame with some weird ass yeah. haircut. And apparently the cats act fine. They don't act like they're traumatized or anything. But the owners are really freaked out, which I would be too. I would be too. This is one of the many them. reasons my cats don't go outside. Yeah. Uh <laughs> well, somehow they're catching them, which makes you think they're feeding them. Right. Yeah. That's always scares me because. Or are they literally just walking around with a razor in their, an electric razor in their pocket and they just grab a friendly cat and go Zoop, and then let the cat go. I mean, it could be as simple as that. <laughs> I just. I don't know. I've really put a lot of thought into this and I. And they call him really Jack puzzled. the Clipper. Jack the Clipper. That's what they called the what, the guy in the UK or the person in the UK. The person. We don't know if it's a yeah, man or no, a woman. We, we have no idea. No one knows who's done it. Why? Nothing. Okay, well, if you are Jack the Clipper, please send us a message. We'll keep you anonymous. We have no reason just to shake you down. We're dying we just to know. Why are you doing this? Yeah. Yeah. What the, what the hell is this? <laughs> yeah. So, there you go. <laughs> okay, the then. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. Okay, then. Well, I'm going to take it back over for some WTF news. Okay. This is another story out of Oregon, which again has to lead us to ask, Oregon, are you okay? Right. Oh, boy. <laughs> yep, I know. Already, I'm sure this is going to be some gross. Mm -hmm. So this guy, this happened in Portland. This guy was actually just convicted of some crimes. His name is Gregory Rodvelt. And it's really sad. It starts out kind of sad for Gregory, but then you you kind of lose your patience with him. Mm. Gregory was, uh, he lost his home in a very bitter lawsuit mm. and was forced to move out. He was he's 71. Oh, boy. And... That sucks. And it, that makes my heart hurt because we've seen some of that around here with older people being evicted so they could raise the apartment rates and whatever. Anyway, mm -hmm. bad things happen to people right. that kind of put them over the edge. But then again, it's the more you read the story, you start to realize that Gregory is actually a real problem and makes you wonder what else he's done that uh, kind of mm -hmm. caused him to uh, get to where he's at. Uh oh, he's a bit unhinged. So he moved out. But he moved out with the intention of seriously injuring anybody who tried to enter the house. Okay. So one of the things that he did is he set up a booby trap. Well, here's one of them. Oh, boy. Yeah. He, well, he set up a whole bunch of booby traps. One of them, and I thought I had a picture of it, and I guess I don't. One of them actually was a hot tub on its side that he had placed so that when anyone entered the property and moved something, it would turn the uh, hot tub loose and it would roll at them and hopefully run them over. <laughs> like a giant oh round hot tub. Yeah. This is like a Wile E. Coyote kind of setup, huh? Yeah. The police called it an Indiana Jones style booby trap. <laughs> he also had rigged a wheelchair. To even get in the house, they had to bring out uh, the bomb squad to use charges to uh, set off some booby traps at the doors so they could even get in. There okay. were also spike strips on the road, steel animal traps on the gate, and under the hood of a minivan. 
intended to, you know, snap your arm Ooh. <coughs> or your hand off when you reached in there. Mm-hmm. So when the gate was open, the hot tub would roll down the hill and crush whoever opened the gate. <laughs> God. So then he had set a rat trap that was modified to fire a shotgun shell. So that when the garage door opened, it would fire a shotgun shell at whoever was standing there. Oh, my God. So once they used an explosive charge to gain entry to the front door, when they went inside, there was a wheelchair in the entryway that, when bumped, triggered a homemade shotgun device that discharged a shotgun shell that actually shot an FBI bomb technician right below the knee. Oh, jeez. So they, uh, you know, had to go to the hospital, but the house was full of this shit. So luckily that was the only injury. Um, But obviously he was charged because you can't do that. And he was found guilty of assaulting a federal officer and discharging a firearm during and in relation to a crime of violence. So his crimes are punishable up to 20 years and up to life in prison. He'll be sentenced in a month or so. And uh, yeah, he'll probably do the rest of his life in prison. But uh, he couldn't just move out gracefully, man. He had to set it up to hopefully kill people. I mean, how did he know how to do these things? Or is this just a Good Google question. it and look it up on YouTube kind of situation? Like, Or is he just a tinkerer that, you know, uh-huh. knows how to figure stuff out, you know? Like, like it wouldn't surprise me if my husband figured this stuff out. Yeah, like he could do it, I think. If he wanted to, but he wouldn't. Yeah. But (laughs) hopefully not. No, no. So there's a part of me that goes, what happened to Gregory that this is where his life is at? But then again, Gregory, people could have been killed. The intention was for people to be killed. Not cool, dude. Not cool at all. Well, and probably not even the people responsible for him having to move out of the house either. Right. Definitely. Yeah. So, Yikes. no, instead he put a bunch of law enforcement at risk and shot one of them. Yikes. Yeah. That is terrifying. But I'll pull with a wheelchair. Yeah. Wheelchair's a clue, you know, a clue to his wife die in this house and that was hers or was this mother? Mm-hmm. Like, when there's medical equipment about, there's been hard things happening, you know? Definitely. Definitely. I think that's worrisome and sad too. So I think it's one part sad, one part pretty scary and also too because what the hell but yeah. <laughs> the rolling hot tub holy shit yeah now that's some skill to get that thing that's to be able to move strength that made me think that there's no way gregory did this by himself because he's no, 71 he... years old how would he get that hot tub on its side and hooked up with that booby trap in a way that just opening the gate would pull a cord that would release it to roll down a hill right. nah he had to have had help I would imagine so. Yikes. Wow. Anyway, Mm -hmm. luckily nobody was uh, hurt worse than they were, but hopefully that agent heals up uh, quickly. But, yep, that's what happened. Wow. So I'm going to kick it back over to you for some, uh, let's see, creepy crime. No, weird crime. Weird, Weird crime. Now, there is a black market for just about everything. There's a black market for semen, gross, uh, sand, weirdly, um, wine, as we know. We heard all about a big maple syrup heist that happened a few years ago. Yes, Uh, Komodo dragons, obviously. There's also a black market for cheese. Oh. (laughs) So... Um, some of this happens, has come out of Russia because Vladimir Putin banned, um, a banned importation of Western food products. I think it's happened more than once. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of it was happening in Russia because, you know, the Russians couldn't get any cheese that was made in like France or Sweden or any of the good cheese places. Right. Okay. So <laughs> at one point, a criminal cheese gang was busted. The Russian police busted them for hauling $30 million of contraband cheddar. Cheddar, my friends. This wasn't fancy cheese. 
This was plain old cheddar. <laughs> but I mean, if you couldn't get it, uh, that would suck, right? I think it would. Yeah. But there is a black market for cheese in the U.S. too. Oh. And this is all because of like FDA rules, right? So in the U.S., oh. you can't import oh. cheeses that are aged more than 60 days. And everything has to come from pasteurized milk. Because if not, they say that's going to make you super sick, right? Mm -hmm. But apparently, um, there's a real market for some of these cheeses that, you know, could be considered dangerous. Because of um, bacteria and salmonella, E. coli, listeria, stuff like this. Why? Oh. Why? Yeah. They can't be good enough. I, I would think so. I mean, than, at least for me. No. I would be scared. But here are some of the things that have been happening around cheese smuggling. Oh. So there are people who are obsessed with cheese to the mm -hmm. level that they will go to another country and uh, lug back in their luggage raw milk brie in their suitcases. Oh. Um, which, <laughs> what? I mean, that's definitely not been refrigerated. What the hell? Oh. Um, some people were busted. Some guy was busted for making raw milk camembert. Camembert oh. in um, okay in uh, New York. Okay, that guy quickly decided to start making something else because he didn't want to go to prison. Um, so but <laughs> this 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 hilarious. So I guess one of the most desirable contraband cheeses is something called Mont d'Or. It's a seasonal cheese that is only made between August 15th and March 15th and is only sold in the fall and spring periods. Mm -hmm. So it's a spruce boxed alpine cheese um, that's been produced for centuries but is illegal in the United States. Okay. So it's probably so, safe. I mean... I would think. there's So there's this... Nat, there's this... Um, the o AOC or Appalachian Day Origin Controle, which is a um, a group that controls the making of cheese um, in France, and they oversee okay. this. And so, you know, they say their cheese is safe. Anyway, you know how the U.S. is. So it's got to be our rules or no rules. Sure. But then, <laughs> okay. So I'm starting to believe it's cheese. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So. Ryan, uh, Chef Ryan Hardy of a restaurant called Char Charlie Bird and also Pascal Jones there in New York City um, was talking about this Mont Dior. Uh -huh. And he said, it's nearly impossible for us to get it. By French AOC certification law, it cannot be made from pasteurized milk, so it can never be allowed in the United States. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's unctuous, creamy pate is only eaten when you peel back the rind it's then that you realize it's the gangster white truffle of all cheeses. This By is God. black market cheese. The gangster <laughs> of <laughs> black market cheese. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, some people are so committed to their cheese connoisseurship that they mm -hmm. great lengths to uh, get these cheeses mm -hmm. of the bands. Well, I mean, it's gangster cheese, so. Cheese. Yes, I'd never really thought of cheese being able to be a gangster. So, uh, just so you I know. I think I didn't either. Yeah. Well, okay then. Hmm. I mean, I have questions. You could make it for yourself if you had raw milk, you had your own cows. Which can't I sell. You can't make that. It probably comes from very specific cows, and probably does. I don't know. I mean, I very love regional. Cheese. Do not get yeah. me wrong. I'm a big fan of cheese. Am I a fan of cheese to go to this length for cheese? I think I've reached my limit. Probably. I. My concern actually is more like I don't really want to buy cheese that uh, people just. Uh, have you guys ever made cheese? 
I've made cheese several times mm -hmm. uh, for my family. And we did buy raw milk off of, you know, illegally. Facebook. Because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> off Facebook. That's true. Uh, but now you can get it in Idaho. Raw milk isn't illegal here anymore. But mm -hmm. um, but at any rate, because you need raw milk to make cheese. That is, that's a fact. Uh, to make good cheese. But making cheese is kind of gross. It requires a lot of your hands in it. And... Mm -hmm various ingredients and aging and stuff like I would be scared of cheese that just anybody made that you didn't know had some hygiene requirements of themselves mm -hmm. uh, or you know that were mandated so I understand that piece uh, I would want just buy any old cheese that just somebody made I wouldn't because that grosses well, me what out. if they smuggled it in their suitcase back from France unrefrigerated for that very long flight well does and i guess it was in there if it was in there if they checked the bag mm -hmm. and it was refrigerated because the, that part of the plane isn't heated mm -hmm. i don't know it's it needed to be <laughs> we made cheese that had to be aged so you you dip it in hot wax you put it in the fridge you age it for i can't remember how much it was it was quite a while it was a few months Mm -hmm. And so it went out in our extra fridge in our garage. We aged it, whatever. I was too grossed out by it to eat it. I wouldn't even taste it. Scott tasted it. He said it was fine and that I was being weird, but I just couldn't do it. So I, I think, yes, uh, no. <laughs> right? I know. I, this is the I'm going. And then this is the stuff that could give you, I don't know, listeria. Um, I think I'm going to take a hard pass on that. Yeah, no. Salmonella? No, thank no. you. However, e if any of you have ever tasted this cheese, make the case. Tell us where Please, make Tell the case, yes. yes. Obviously, I am just some Idaho hick who has never had Mont Dior. Right. Maybe it's amazing. It is apparently the gangster of all white truffle cheeses. Yes, we, we need to understand this. Yeah. Yes. So if you know, please comment and let us know. But at this point, I am very flummoxed by this. Mm -hmm. Me too. Okay. All right. Well, I think all you've got left is some creepy crime. Oh, my God, do I. <laughs> <laughs> well allow me to introduce you to this genius oh dear and if you're looking at the picture you'll find him uh, there's some concerning uh items be drawn on the board behind him <laughs> drawn so um artfully yes uh they're sex toys in case uh you're you're watching or you're listening and not watching, but uh, yeah, and this is him actually, uh, I believe, being arraigned. So let's talk about it. What? How could sex toys send somebody to jail? Well, turns out they can. So this happened in Rhode Island. This is Benjamin Nadrowski. So Ben has been charged with four felony charges. Um, he was breaking into homes. So apparently on June 2nd, around 1045 p.m., he, the police were called because somebody tried to climb through their bathroom window. This person was getting ready for bed and saw someone standing on a chair trying to get in their bathroom window. So they called the police. Uh, they, he also confronted the suspect and told him to leave. So... The suspect apologized and said he's sorry he uh, had the wrong house. Well, uh, well what's, what's the right house? Uh, <laughs> when's it ever okay to be breaking in through the bathroom window? <clears throat> so well, he left never in, as far as I know. Yeah. So the witness said that he left in a white vehicle. So an hour later, the resident saw the same vehicle. So the resident apparently was kind of on the hunt trying to find this fool. Uh, saw him on a different street with the door open to that car. So the police came. They found him digging through a dumpster. And so they asked him uh, what he's doing. And about some other breaking and entering incidents happened uh, throughout that same neighborhood during the week. He told the police he was just trying to buy some weed. But then... When they start talking to him some more about some other break-ins, they discover he's broken into several other houses. Why? Well, he was stealing sex toys. 
But guys, oh. he was just, he's, this is a good guy. <laughs> he was just trying to come up with a birthday gift. What? <laughs> by stealing used sex toys and then you give yourself an alibi for a crime by admitting to another crime? <laughs> well, I... Very confused. I'm guessing there's a girlfriend out there with a very broke boyfriend, but yes, <laughs> he was a stealing. He said that he, uh, it's the time of year that college students leave, so they throw a lot of stuff away. So he was digging through dumpsters to see if there was anything good, but also had broken into a few houses just, just to steal sex toys. And he had stolen some sex toys. So, oh, God. Dear God, uh, <laughs> that happened. <laughs> Listen, I don't know who Ben's girlfriend or wife or, or a boyfriend is, for that matter. That's not right. Could be generalized too much. Um, don't don't use those. Don't. Uh, and maybe just go get an antibiotic, just to be sure. There's like uh, not enough Clorox wipes or dishwashing liquid in the world to make that palatable. Holy shit! Yeah, it, it's it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> ben actually told police he didn't steal any items of value, only sex toys. <laughs> uh, have you been to one of those stores? They are expensive. Yeah. So <laughs> he does have charges. The bail was only set for like $5,000. Uh, not exactly a menace to society, I guess. Hopefully not. Uh, the judge did want to... Uh, get a mental health screening and try and get a better understanding of what's going on there with old Ben. Um, Seems wise. But again, if you know Ben or you ever have, and he's given you a gift of, well, I don't know, a sex toy. Just, just, just go get checked. Just, just go get checked. You don't also know. throw that, throw that bitch away right now. Oh yeah. Right. This very <laughs> minute. Yeah. Yeah. And anything it's touched and including yourself, I think I, I, I don't know, but <laughs> What? <laughs> he cannot with Dude, this one. Isn't there an Adam and Eve in your town? I mean, <laughs> come on. Maybe it's somebody's kink, actually. Maybe they Probably. wanted used sex toys. God. Uh, gross. What? Oh. Mm -mm. Humans are not okay. Yeah, that is still true. <laughs> no, humans are not okay, for sure. <laughs> particularly in Oregon and Rhode Island today. Yep. And on Facebook in general, but I think we already own and that. Jack the Clipper, wherever this person is. <laughs> wherever they may be. Come yes. on. Just tell us why. Just why. Just what why. is it? What are you, are you doing something with the fur? Is this a weird kink? Which whatever. Except no, you can't be shaving cats for that. That's gross. Don't do that. Shave yourself. Uh, I mean, <laughs> what are you doing? Are you, are you, are you making scarves? Are you learning about cat DNA? I just, what, I don't know. I'm very. Is this curious. for cosplay somehow? Yeah. What is this? Maybe they're to. a furry and they want to make their costume out of real cat fur. <gasps> Maybe. And they can only ever get one swipe in before the cat kicks the shit out of them because that's yeah. exactly what would happen. Yeah. And so they have to do it to a lot. I don't know. I'm so confused. Okay. Well, that you bring up an interesting point. Have any clinics recently in this area been treating people for cat scratches? Uh, that bite and bites and bites. Yeah. Because mm. I just think about my girls and what they would do if somebody tried to shave them. Oh my God. You would need the scene. emergency room. Yeah. Pretty much. Yes. Well, I think that's how you catch the culprit. You just got to find out who's been getting treated for cat yeah, scratch or bite injuries. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can shake them down. You'll find yeah. totes and totes and totes of cat fur <laughs> in their house. <clears throat> Why? Leave these kitties alone. What did they ever do to you? Alongside totes and totes and totes of used sex toys and totes and totes and totes of illegal cheese. <laughs> And they also have a pet Komodo dragon in the backyard because they are epically stupid. It's all one person. It's, it's one person. person. We've, we've solved the case. There <laughs> you go. Good job, Inspector Gadget. We've got it figured out. <laughs> well, that's it. But we're actually going to be back tonight mm -hmm. uh, for our second drunkumentary. So Monday night, 
What time you want to record that? We're going to do seven, eight. Let's, let's do, do eight. eight. Yeah. Eight o'clock mountain time. Mountain. We're doing the second shiny, happy people episode. We'll be here. We'll tell you all about it. Mm -hmm. I'll be drinking gin or something. Me, me too. I don't know. Maybe it's peanut butter whiskey tonight. Mm. Mm. Love me some peanut butter whiskey. Scott bought this fancy moonshine from Montana that's made in Ennis, Montana, which is a little town that we love. Uh, mm. It's honey moonshine, and it's pretty compelling. Maybe I'll just drink that. Mm. Well, I don't know. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. The hard way, for sure. <laughs> So join us for sure. And if you don't make it live, that's cool because it'll be over on our podcast as well as on YouTube. So you can find it one way or another. But for sure. thanks for being here. Have a good Monday. This has been yet another production of the True Crime Squad. Bye, everybody.